Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And welcome back to another episode of Phantom Power Eggnog. Phantom Power Eggnog. <laughs> Phantom Eggnog Power. There we go. Different setup today. Do you want to tell them or should I? Why don't you tell them? I always, I always tell them the things. The thought was to get away from the table because we did it in the control room last time and that was a lot of fun. That was a whole lot of fun, yeah. So I texted Josh and I was like, we should just walk around this time. So it's probably not going to sound as good as it normally does because we're on the little clip-ons, but we're going to walk around the studio and just talk about like standout gear. And big thanks year. to our, our cameraman, Carl with a C, Carl with a C <laughs> helping us out. <laughs> yeah, let's take a walk. Look at this thing. Oh, we... Wait, we got to go the same direction. And it should have moved. We're not really, we don't really know because we can't I think see it, it moved. from this far. Low box is moving. I mean, Carl is obviously rotating his body to follow us. If this works, this is this is really cool. It's going to be nice. <laughs> I hope this works. We can do so many activities on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so what should we talk about first? Well, Jeremy, what kind of uh, 2023? It's been a long year. You've been through lots of different gear. What are what are some of the highlights that you just see like in this room looking around? Quite a few things. First off, gear. I don't want this to be like a like a gear worshiping video by any means. Like gear's a tool and I get to try a lot of it. Some of it's awesome, some of it's cool but it doesn't really find a use for me so this is really anecdotal first and foremost but there are definitely pieces that like stand out for one reason or another and that's kind of what i was hoping to go for so you haven't you oh jeremy you haven't heard what gear is what makes you better at being a musician or just working in the music industry that is definitely true yeah every time yeah. Buy expensive stuff and you'll be better. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. <laughs> Practice, that maybe 2% of everything that goes into being a musician. The other 98% is how much debt did you put yourself in buying gear? <laughs> Which, okay, I know this. we're getting off to like tangents here, but uh, debt is a serious thing. This is true. I have held it with gear. And there are certain moments in your career where sometimes that is like an inevitability. Like you have to do your job and mm -hmm. spend money to make money, but get out of that as quick as possible. And I don't think there's a thing that I have debt on right now, besides my home. Well, that's a whole other. That's another can of video. Worms, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing I see is actually right off camera here. So should we? F let's do it. Flip yeah, it let's show them. Friday audio cab. This thing is nuts right now. The grill's off of it because if I have my chance to mic, I like to pull the grill off so I can see where the goo is, how far I am from the cone, where I am on the speaker, but it just sits right on here. And that's interesting because normally we want people to look at my grill, my, my, my grill. <laughs> amps are cool and I definitely have my fair share of amps, but... This, having this thing, and I've had some cool cabs, and I have an orange, there's a Weber below this thing, mm -hmm. that's a cool cab. I have a 2001 Mesa Oversize that I tracked down from, like, all over the country, it turned out to be, like, 10 miles down the road. Um, but this thing has made recording so much easier. Like, we'll get into mics, and mics are important, and this is, like, one of the coolest mics for guitar that I like right now. But the cab has made so many things so much easier just because it sounds good. It sounds really good. Is this the same cab where you have a video talking about the glue on the speaker, like the glue spot? That was a different video. Like that was my orange, I think, when okay, I was talking cab. about that. That was okay. before I got this thing. But I've had this for a little while. This is the first full year I've had it. Yeah. And I think it's been on every single project that I've done in one way or another. It's just, I know that that's what we've used on every project I've had in here. It just... Sounds good. Yeah. Like the two speakers are completely different from each other. Um, Louis at Fried Egg is a genius. If you're interested, reach out to him. Like, tr he has no idea I'm going to talk about this, but like, truly. So, what, what speakers are in here? 
I know you've told me before, but I can't. Mojo remember. Tone. Um, I want to say it's it's like kind of a vintage thirty thing, and then like I don't remember what the other ones are called, but it's like the hyper opposite of a vintage thirty. The idea being like if you're miking both of these, you have like a hi fi full bodied sound mm-hmm. or you can pick one and you have like very differentiating tones on either side yeah a couple different flavors and then the back of this thing i'm not going to spin it around right now because it's heavy but you can pop it off because it's magnetic and all so you can either have a closed back or an open back cab so effectively you've got like six different sounds in one box mm-hmm. and changing speakers they're on like little quick release bolts so Oh, that's can, cool. I didn't know that. You can change speakers in like a couple minutes on these things, but I don't worry about it because these sound, these sound great. And it's like a piece of art too. I mean, this thing's just pretty to look at. It gets talked about a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So check out those things. Biggest change that I made around here that easily up my guitar game. While we're over here, you mentioned that this might be one of your favorite guitar mics. And I know we've talked about this already. Yeah. But the, not on this video. The Loughton stuff, I've really gotten to try a lot of them on a lot of different types of things. This is the 208. So this is like built as a vocal mic, I think, and it's killer on that. Uh, I've used it on snare. Killer kick in mic. Um, I think the lesson here is it's just versatile. <laughs> yeah, super versatile. But... In a room with a lot of guitar cabs or recording in a room with a lot of sound is helpful because it has pretty good rejection and it sounds killer, like it's a condenser. Um, And putting it on guitar cabs is just chef's kiss. I plugged it before, but um, on your channel, we've got a whole video of recording a song with nothing but Loughton mics. And this got used on a bunch of different things. Yeah, everywhere. I think every source. We used it. I think so. Kick, yeah. bass cab, guitar cab, maybe not vocals, but I know the scratch. No, the scratch was on uh, the snare mic. No, it wasn't. Scratch was on this. Well, scratch. Oh, yeah. snare mic was double set up. Yeah. For the final. So if you want those tracks, track. on if you go to that video on my Patreon, uh, you can download the tracks for that and hear it for yourself. Hear it so. for yourself, indeed. And hear this cab. There Two you go. for one. Two for one. <laughs> I'd be hard pressed not to like mention the Eden here. This thing is a killer little mic. It's Loughton again. I gotta not like pick up the same brand of stuff here. I also wouldn't call it little. Just a killer it's, mic. That's a hefty, hefty guy. But uh, this is has been crazy versatile. Recording like a ton of different sources. I fell in love with it on a room mic, but as vocals, because I've been using Soyuz stuff mm-hmm. for a long time, and it's, if we walk anywhere closer to the drum, <laughs> you'll see them making drums right now, and it's kind of silly, but uh, it's just a very different flavor from what I'm used to, so I'm really enjoying this thing, and it's hyper versatile having like the three different modes mm-hmm. on it, so it's like three different mics in one killer. This thing, the MA300 is a monster of a tiny little tube condenser a low-end beast this thing's killer on snare drum bass cab it's just one of those mics that sounds good on just about everything and david yeah david royer at mojave's just he's he's a genius Mm -hmm. with mic design if you have has that uh we were talking about it's like i think your video was maybe the 57 killer something of that nature oh probably really hyperbolic yeah (laughs) (laughs) but still it's it's um do you remember the the model of that mic in particular the mad yes yeah and it was just it it works great on on everything that you would want to put a 57 on but with a different kind of characteristic they're over here let's take a walk Oh, oh, oh how's this thing do when we're walking this is the MAD. Uh, if David Royer, who got famous making like ribbon mics with Royer, um, designing a dynamic mic for the first time, and it doesn't feel like a lot of dynamic mics that I'm used to, I can put this on sources and get the benefit of a dynamic, like putting it on a guitar cab 
where you would normally put a 57, or on snare, where you would normally put a 57, or on kick drum, if you want the yeah. 57 thing. But like, there's so much more body here. It's it's flat, where you have those weird resonant peaks with a 57. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's exactly what you want. This feels like a very different approach to that thing, like a like a classy 57, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Like 57 will do the job. This one will get dressed up and take you up to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> what what kind of dinner are we talking? Like We're, steak or like if you're, I don't know. But not like an Applebee's steak, right? Are no, we talking like a, like a Longhorn? I don't know, man. Texas Roadhouse? It's a good steak, wherever that happens to be for you. Home, my own kitchen. I feel that. Yeah. <laughs> these, okay, like these 220s right here, again, Loudon. I... Trent at Loudon has no idea we're doing this. No, so we didn't know we were doing this. We didn't know we were doing this. <laughs> Thanks, eggnog. But <laughs> <laughs> these 220s here are insane. Like, and I, they're dirt cheap. Like, I don't remember exactly what they cost. I don't have my phone on me. I got it. Look up what these things cost. But they're like, they're smaller little condenser mics, uh, but we put these on overheads for that same session that we were talking about that you can go download the files for on, on my Patreon if you want to, um, or just go check out the video. Um, oh, wow. What do yeah, they cost? Sweetwater's got them for $2.99. $2.99. $2.99. Like, if you want a stereo set of overheads, these are killer, and they work in a whole lot of different places. Like, budget, hard to beat here. Yeah. You say two ninety nine or two twenty nine? Two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. On sale from three twenty nine. That ain't bad. Oh, this was an idea. I literally wanted to buy the cheapest mic on Amazon. Don't say I haven't seen this one. No, this is this is junk. <laughs> That's <laughs> what this is. <laughs> if it's junk, I feel safe holding it. <laughs> the ki kilograph. Yeah, you, I can't even. Kilograph. Find it. It's uh, I wanted to buy the cheapest mic on Amazon to make a point. Be like, I can record this and make it sound good. I couldn't. <laughs> I tried. So did the video die? Or it was almost a video, spin? but I was like, there's no point. It still sounds like crap. So, yeah. Not every you video you see. I don't know. I thought about, like, putting a different capsule in there and making, like, a sleeper mic. But That'd what's, be fun. what's the point? I don't know. It'd be fun. That's the point. Why <laughs> does anybody make a sleeper PC? Because they're fun. <laughs> Vanguard. I feel like I should grab this guy only because, like, it's not as well known as some of the other mics. And I have not had a stereo condenser mic before. Like, being able to, like, switch these around, have a mid-side right here, do X, Y on overheads and not worry about phase coherency, at least within the mic itself. But killer, smaller company... Doing really good stuff, fairly affordable. I think this is a thousand dollars. And so much versatility. The yeah. the track that you did, the one mic track. I was kind of surprised how well it held up. It really like, did. <laughs> it really did. We did this with the uh, we redid Wallflowers um, one headlight mm -hmm. with one mic, which is actually two mics. But go check it out if you want to hear it. Killer versatile mic. I also took this with me on a vacation and got some like nature sounds with it, recorded acoustic in the woods with it. Um, really cool stereo condenser mic. For and when you were in, in the woods, that was paired with your extra fancy interface. Oh, the Neve. Yeah. yeah. That is killer. Uh, but before, uh, hang on. Mm -hmm. I got it. This snare mic, I have taken these to so many different spots and had these installed in so many locations like snare mic it's basically a smaller version of the 208 yeah essentially it's very reminiscent of the 208 so killer little mic again i'm not shilling for loud and i promise it's just killer stuff what's uh what's this guy that's a jay-z mic. i don't remember exactly when i got this uh vintage 11 like um it's really dark it's okay. really cool. I used it on guitar cabs. I liked it. 
Voice, I like it. Snare bottom, it's pretty cool. It's a, just a weird form I can see factor. something pretty dark sounding cool on a snare bottom. Oh, yeah, it is killer. Yeah, I it's, just like the form factor. That's why I gravitated towards it. Really interesting little mic. I don't use it as much as I feel like I should because it looks, like, too pretty. And I don't want to mess it up. And the grill kind of does this, like... See how moving? A little bendy thing. Like, <laughs> but it sounds cool. I don't know if it's like stand out enough to be on everything. This is probably stand out just because of the price point. Yeah. The 440 Pure. If you have no mic and you want to start recording, you're on your own. Like, comes with a pop filter that's decent. 440 Pure. It's dirt cheap, sounds great. I shot it out against the Pure Tube, which is the much more expensive Lewitt mic, and the Pure Tube is fantastic. But this thing is great, just as far as budget mics go. Yeah, what does what that one fall under, do you remember? I wanna say it's it's less than 300 bucks. Yeah. Like maybe 250, something like that. Then we get over here. Yeah, the Rode NT1s, right? Is that what they're called? Rhodes sent me these, and I, yeah, I honestly ones. tried to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I wasn't that interested in trying these things, because he sent um, an NT1 and then an NT1 Plus. Because that one uh, has USB output, right? Yeah, it's that one. It's on the, the USB-C is like inside the XLR jack. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, so you're going to have to have a, a little cable to get up in there. So, and they, they give you a really nice USB-C cable with it, but essentially they're the same mics, just one also has a converter built into it. You can use it as an interface. Mm -hmm. Well, just for the input. But I didn't want them to send them to me. I was like, well, I guess I'll try them. And we started using them, mm -hmm. and they sound fantastic they sound on the great. podcasts. And then... They've been uh, gaining popularity in like the streamer uh, streamer world. I can well. totally see that. I have Especially no idea. Especially this guy with the USB output because streamers, I mean, you only need the mic. You don't need the whole interface unless you're using like the uh, Go XLR kind yeah. of setup or something. But just pop this in uh, the computer and you're good to go. It sounds really good. I was surprised. I've kind of played with them on some other sources, but I haven't had time to make a dedicated video out of these. And honestly, I haven't gotten to learn them as well as I should, but I don't even know what the price point is on these, but they're find out. pretty I cheap as far as point. I know. But they sound really good. The NT1 without the USB connection is 269 Comes with the shock mount and everything. So we're learning, there's a whole lot of options around that like under $300 price point. That'd be a fun shootout to do. Like sub three, like two sub to three hundred. Yeah, because there's a lot of options there. Like, because everything, a lot of people want to talk ninety nine dollars, but there's a lot if you have a little bit more money. This Roxy. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> I when Grace sent this, I wanted to hate it. Like, <laughs> I had no idea what it was. We did a video on this thing. Mm -hmm. So go watch the video. I'm not going to berate the point, but this thing is killer. And yeah, I found we've, so many uses for it. We uh, spent a lot of breath talking about that thing. <laughs> it's because it's confusing. It's confusing and <laughs> so cool. So cool. Mobile stuff. Uh, having come from Apollo's and Apogee, uh, going through like the third party like console app stuff, this was pretty refreshing. Um, and it sounds stupid good. Um, so the 88M, the Neve's little mobile interface, which is a, it's a tank, mm -hmm. super fast. You have send and return before conversion. So you can use these as external preamps with a current setup, which I have done and they sound great. Uh, actually used it on that Loughton video. Yep. <laughs> um, there's also ADA in and out. So this is a killer travel rig, and that's how I've used it. I have a claret across the building, um, and once I sell my Kemper and I get that flight rack back, <laughs> that's going <laughs> to be my fly rig. rig. Yeah, nice. So, um, I mean, you could fit the claret in there. Yeah, but I don't want to carry the Kemper. Kemper's so heavy. But if you're out and about, what if you need guitar tones? 
Well, I'll deal. I love the Kemper. If anybody wants to buy a Kemper, you let me know. So, but this has been kill- mostly because it's just, what is it called? ASIO, where it's just mm-hmm. recognized. Like, you don't have to go through any hoops. It's just directly on your interface. You don't have to mess with any third-party stuff. It sounds good. Ada in and out, super flexible. Plug in your laptop and your tablet and your phone. The iPad. Yeah. Which yeah. is, that was bonkers to me. Careful. It's hot. Careful. Yeah. I don't even think that thing works anymore. I need a new power soak. Like a, a super soaker? <laughs> Standout stuff. The bar is high. What are we looking for? We've covered a lot of the things that have stood out to me just visiting the things I'm at least familiar with. I mean, if you want to talk like kind of budget friendly stuff that makes a big difference, the launchers, like Soyuz launcher, it's like a kind oh, of like a you. cloud lifter, essentially. Uh, like I think a lot of people are familiar with the cloud lifters. If you just want more gain on something, this kind of does the same thing, but adds like a lot of color and vibe. Oh, cool. Killer little thing. It's like for, I think, pretty close to the same price as the cloud lifter. I could be wrong. Annotate that if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. We'll but check it. Really cool. They just look, they just look neat. <laughs> so clean and aesthetically <laughs> pleasing to me. Uh, yeah. You had mentioned your, your travel rig that you are working on putting together. Mm-hmm. I would imagine that you're familiar with this, but have you come across the the Bento box? No. It's like a portable 500 series rig with its own power supply built in with just like a regular three prong power outlet that you plug into it. Mm-hmm. They're so cool. They have a little handle and it's it's not as rugged looking as a flight case, but you got like the rubber feet on it so you can have it horizontal or vertical. And I think they make a six unit and up to a 12 unit version. I think API Lunchbox kind of did that same thing too. Yeah. Like I had one a long time ago, internal power supply meant to be carried around so you can have your bank of faders. Mm-hmm. I think Cranborn's kind of doing that too. Okay. But they're, you can use those as interfaces if you want. So like your preamps in this thing That's and your cool. 500 series rec are your interface. Definitely not the budget-friendly way to go. No. <laughs> but I, I fell down the rabbit hole because after we were talking about all the, the cappy stuff mm-hmm. uh, in the last video, I just went down a rabbit hole on that website. That's such a fun website. to Cappy? Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's interesting to navigate. I'll yeah. say that. <laughs> <laughs> when you have products that sell themselves, like mm-hmm. <laughs> you can have an okay website. <laughs> well, <laughs> We might have to so I'm gonna make you a Funko Pop? Yeah. Dude, that's standout gear. That is standout gear. All oh, right. here. Standout gear. Stand Merry out Christmas. Gear. Boop. Christmas. <laughs> that's yours. No, you... <laughs> Jeremy. Well, thank you. When you unwrap gifts, do you try to be clean about it? Or you just, like, no. tear them open? I just clipped my fingernails on the way here. Like a classic bass player, I have fingernail clippers in my car. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> this is so cool! <laughs> wow, thanks, man. I was just going on about yours, how cool it was. I made him a Funko Pop. Funko Pop indeed. Dang. It's like scary how close they get. Only bummer is they don't have basses, so that's a guitar. That's okay. I play guitar too. You have to live with it. That's all right. But my Bass wife. is just big guitar. My wife made this one. Mm-hmm. Look how similar these are. Like, same <laughs> shoes, same shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to get like a picture so you can clearly see these things. There's a couple pieces in here that I don't, I think. I did not get this this year, but the Portico 2. Okay. The Neve Portico 2, on my two bus, all the time. What this thing does is crazy, and uh, it's gotten me, like, a fair amount of gigs. Like, I so said we said gears, like, shouldn't make or break you, but I feel like this one, like, people who know what this thing sounds like, 
they're more willing to hire you because you have one. Yeah. And that's not to say, like, this alone is going to get you a gig. You still have to be good. Mm -hmm. Like, you could have this thing and not know how to use it, and it's not going to help you at all. But it's a cool box, is what I'm saying. And it does a whole lot of things just right here that are super helpful. And people who like that sound really like that sound. So. Is it just kind of the flavor of saturation or what what kind of? There's like, I mean, the compression on it is cool. It's not, you're not going to pick this out in a lineup of other compressors just from the compressor side. Objectively, like this is called like, I would refer to this as a compressor, but Neve wants you to think of it as a processor because there's a whole lot of things happening. There's a limiter that sounds really killer. It's really fast. Um, Probably as close to brick wall as you could get in an analog piece. Um, The silk, which if you're familiar with a lot of Neve stuff, you've probably seen the silk circuits. Um, this one does it really well, especially the blue circuit. I never use red on my two bus. I don't know why. I just, I don't like the high end zip thing that it does on the two bus here. But this low end blue, extra tasty. silky. And the SFE, um, which I don't know what that is, sound field expansion. I'm not Sounds sure. Sounds right, right? <laughs> Maybe. Um, but there's a low end like depth knob. So you can either use that as like a low end EQ or how wide or how mono do you want the low end? I normally use it to like goose the bottom end of a mix or to push the low end of a vocal out when I need it. Mm-hmm. And then the widener. So this thing is like a. If you've used like a stereo field expander. Or like the ozone imager, something yeah, along those lines. It's very similar, but this does it in such a nice way. I have ozone and I have that imager. Mm-hmm. This does it in uh, way better. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know how or why, but Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna have you riddle me this. How does how does an imager work? Oh, like, I don't know. I, it, I'm not, yeah, that's above my pay grade. It's a mystery. Like, I understand how to use the sliders on ozone or even easier, the sliders on wider. Have you ever used that one? No. I think it's like a, an old school free widening plugin. It's just one slider. <laughs> I know you can take stuff like that way too far and like obliterate yes. a mix, especially yes. the ozone one. Like you can go way too far. And even the other way, if you're trying to mono like the low end of something, cause I know on that one, you can do it on different frequency bands, mm-hmm. but yeah, like it can really mess up the low end relationship of the entire thing. But I found this one to be really tasty. When you get a piece of gear these days, do you do you go to the extremes on the controls to kind of internally process like the the range that a piece of gear has? Like so, for example, for the the width knob. Mm-hmm. Oh, you were yeah. first ex- you, you experimenting, yeah, all the way. See, see what it sounds oh, like. Oh, yeah, and there were a fair amount of mixes that I probably ruined because I overzealous. pushed it too far. <laughs> yeah, you get excited. I mean, even the first couple masters I did with the burls, like you have like lots of cool color. iron to push into, and you get excited, and you do too much, and you're like, oh, am I just the am I excited keys. because this is like new and shiny or am I actually doing it because the song wants to do it? Mm -hmm. So then once you, once you start to get to know like the sweet spots and this thing has a sweet spot, like, and once you find it, it kind of just stays there. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I'm adjusting release times and attack times, but maybe that's it. Like (laughs) everything else pretty much stays the same on this thing. I think it's been so cool for me to have this realization uh, more and more over a period of time. You know how we always say instrumentalists have their own voice Mm -hmm. and they develop that over years for through a bunch of different experiences and practicing and everything. All of this though is like your fingerprint on what you do and how you make sound. And you're going to be, you know, going off of um, examples that maybe the artist wants to sound like, or you're going to be working into what the song's asking for, Mm -hmm. but the musicians do that too. But at the end of the day, they still have their own fingerprints. Yes. You know? And 
The that is very true because it's also like I think about it kind of like woodworking. You give ten different woodworkers the same chisel, and it's going to come out differently. Yeah, like give them a project, give them the same set of tools, you'll get different furniture. Same thing with this stuff. Like if you give this to another engineer, it'll come out different. Yeah, and there's a whole list of factors as to why, but it's finding those tools and and knowing how you use them Mm -hmm. um, or how you like to use them. Because the things I like about this, if one of you guys go out and get it, you might like something completely different. Like you might want to goose the limiter on this thing. Sounds cool. I don't really do it because I'm pushing and clipping on the back end, but Mm -hmm. 10 different ways just to talk about that. (laughs) Um, I guess a couple other pieces. We kind of talked about them in the last video. The Newton and the Audioscape. Yeah, yeah. These are probably the last two, unless I'm looking around missing something. Oh. Now, we've shown this once before. Did we? We did. But it was it was a handful of episodes ago, pretty early in, because you had just gotten it. But I, I think you've gotten quite a bit more use out of it since then. <laughs> so maybe an updated take on the GNO. It's, I mean, the bummer is... I don't use my other guitars nearly as much. Yeah. And let's flip around here. Like, this isn't all of them either. Like, <laughs> that's not all of them. This is some of them. But, and there's more out in the room, and there's some at my house. Yeah. But just the crazy versatility in these pickups. And I didn't think I liked this neck, because it's a it's a punker. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like, it, well, and especially in comparison to some of your other guitars. Yeah, this one's going to feel like a much more baseball bat like experience. It's big. Yeah, and it at first glance it doesn't feel as fast, but it's been a lot of fun and very versatile. And like, if you sit here and just spend any amount of time, like if you're comfy on this guitar, like you can pull just about any sound. Yeah. Because you can go series, parallel, mix those two. The tone knob is actually super useful. And then, obviously, it's just a lot of different sounds in this one thing. A lot of different sounds. And I didn't think I would like a pink guitar. Oh, pink guitars are cool, man. And the super vain part of this, I'm a big guy. Having an offset actually looks normal. And it's just a cool body shape. And it's uh, beveled <laughs> on the back, too, to make it extra comfy. It, it's a comfy instrument mm. to play for a long time. But, like... Look how goofy this thing looks against me. Like, I wouldn't call it goofy. It just still looks good. You uh, make any guitar look good, Jeremy. <laughs> so I think the last things are the Audioscape G Stereo and mm-hmm. the Newton, which I have a video about to drop on this. Yeah. Um, and since I've kind of teased it on Instagram, I've since learned, I guess there's like, a lot of back and forth with this little unit. I mean, and in the realm of outboard gear, and I understand, like, I'm blessed to have what I have and be able to use what I use, and I don't take that for granted. This thing's six ninety nine. Yeah. In the realm of outboard gear, that's pretty affordable. So even that it can hang with pieces that are more expensive is impressive to me. But I didn't watch other reviews on okay. this thing. Before I did it, and I had this for like six months, Mm -hmm. and it's been right here, right next to the Neve, and it's been cool to just go boom, boom, right one into the other. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the big thing I noticed, because I've used SSL style stuff, like plug-in wise, for a long time, and I think a lot of people kind of know like the gray plug-in, or what is it, Slate's FG gray. Mm -hmm. Um. So a lot of people are kind of familiar with having an SSL style, but actually having hardware, I've learned, I've, I've since adjusted how I'm using the plugins that I use, and of which, now that I've had hardware, and this isn't like an actual SSL, so I know it's that. It's a style. It's a style. SSL style. But I have used a real SSL, like the gang right out of the desk, and this feels close. It's not exact, but... Um, the way it compresses, how bombastic it can get, the kind of laziness, not laziness, but like there's a squish mm-hmm. in it that's like really hard to replicate with a plug-in. 
And you tried. (laughs) Yeah, I did. (laughs) (laughs) And I think the one that gets the closest is like the townhouse. Yeah. But still. But that still had a completely different perceivable flavor to me. But I still use the townhouse. Right, yeah. All over the place. Um, The difference, main difference I know and why I keep it on my two bus is like what it does to the sides. Um, and I haven't found a way or I haven't found a plugin that does that, that nails the sides of mm-hmm. it, like the stereo natural widening that without just without when making it, a it squishes part. it this way, but it doesn't as much. It, even then, like the way the transients get through on this mm-hmm. feels totally different than a plugin. And if you're going to buy a really good SSL style plugin, like you can get cheap ones. I think Waves is what twenty bucks because they're always twenty bucks. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that one. Um, but I mean, if you go out and really spend some money on SSL style plugins, you're kind of halfway to owning a hardware. And I think there's more value here because you could sell this. Yeah, if you ever wanted to. And then the cost of ownership could be cheaper than a plugin. Yeah, could be. Maybe not for everybody, but especially depending how long you might hold on to it. I was just going to mention you don't have to tax your computer as much if you want like multiple instances of the plugin version or something. But yeah, I that's mean, not that's, really a... that's the benefit you get with a plugin. But at the same token, like I wouldn't have a whole bunch of SSL style compressors everywhere. Yeah, like that is that seems to be the pushback when you talk hardware stuff, but. Like, yeah, I have one MBP. I don't want this everywhere. Yeah. I don't want this on my entire, like, every on every channel. That would defeat the purpose. Mm-hmm. Like, they're doing certain things at certain times and certain places in the mix or on certain instruments. Same thing with an SSL style. Like, I love it on a drum bus. Yeah. I love it in a few different places, but I'm really going to pick the strings because if I have that pump and that squish everywhere, it kind of just emulsifies into yeah. something weird. And then you don't have this contrast that makes a mix like pop yeah. and gives context to squish yeah. or gives context to transients hitting hard. Turns squish so, into pudding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if everything's squishy, nothing is squishy. So this is true. <laughs> you're just sailing in a sea of squish. <laughs> um, I think the last thing would be the Newton. The Newton. Yeah. And I'm sure there's something I've missed along the way, but uh, and there's a, there's a fair amount of gear here that I haven't tried yet, or I don't know it well enough to be standout at this point. So probably boxes you saw or mics that we walked past that I just yeah. can't speak to because it hasn't. I haven't gotten enough hours on it yet. But this thing, I haven't had it for that long. Uh, probably two months or mm-hmm. so. Um, not long, (laughs) long enough. I've used it on vocals, kick, snare, uh, tried it on bass. I freaking loved it. It's, I think when people look at this against some 1073s, they're going to compare it to a 1073. But that's not. It is not a 1073. It's like they're fundamentally doing different things. Like this has no input transformer. Um, and... I thought I would not like it because of that, because everything in my gear pretty much has an input transformer. Yeah. Um, like hitting iron all the time, lots of color. That's kind of my vibe. But having something like this and the Grace, another super clean pre that I've really come to like. Like I'm kind of rethinking how I do certain things. Mm-hmm. And again, it's all about contrast. Yeah. Things that I'm putting through this, like pop out of a mix like crazy um and it can get colored and it can get dirty and i have a video coming about this and i push it just like i push my 1073s they're like when you want them to get gross and you want them to break up they'll do it yeah and this will too (laughs) in a very reminiscent way it's just you can't push into it like you push into a 1073 and but i'm not i don't really miss that you got that silk circuit you do. There. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the same red blue. Same red blue as down here. Um, the silk at a tracking look. I don't like it here. I mentioned that. The red. The red. The red yeah. silk. Uh, but having this on snare or kick drum, 
holy moly, it's so cool. <laughs> it just like pops it right out of the mix. And the EQ, if you are used to 1073 style stuff, like, I mean, I know the camera is pretty far away, but like even a move like that. Yeah, just a fraction a, of a turn. Is a ton of top end on a 1073. Like you have to goose it a little harder here to get the same thing, mm -hmm. but equally what is that, usable. Like, linear versus algorithmic pots in there, something like that. I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> it's not a 1073, but what I'm finding is I like to use it in the same instances. And it's way more predictable than either one of these 1073s, which I really like. What's that, Jeremy? Modern gear can be good too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I, and I talk about this in the video that's coming, like, would it be painful to like sell these things? Yes. But looking at the price that they are now versus what I paid for them at the time, like it was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I think they were three grand for the pair, which now is kind of laughable to get two actual 1073s pulled out of old desks, like re wrecked by Brent Avro Enterprises a long time ago. Um, now those things sell for like five digits. Yeah. And if I could sell these and get a ton of Newtons, That'd be the move. Yeah. That's kind of where my mind's going. Yeah. Like, do I actually need these 1073s? Uh, we we <laughs> talked about this quite a bit too, but you've gotten the experience from them, yeah. which may be the most valuable part of owning pieces like that, in my opinion, yeah. at least. Well, even having them and having a 1084, like this thing's not on the chopping block. Yeah. This is going to stay around. But having a 1084 and 1073s, like I rarely use the 10. If I have the option, I'm going to use the 1084. Yeah. Uh, so in that alone, I'm like, well, I could get rid of these 1073s and effectively have like a more versatile chain that adds a compressor and adds color in a different way if I want it or not. Because sometimes you don't want the weight that a 1073 just adds. Yeah. But what's the, do you, on, off the top of your head, do you know what the Newton's running? I want to say like uh, 17 or 18. Okay. 1800. Yeah. Probably 1850 ish. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yeah. I'll look it up. But I saw a couple of these listed for 15 grand. Yeah. But that goes back to the conversation earlier. Like <laughs> you never know what's going to take off no. when, when, <laughs> Neve stuff was originally created. Maybe some people had an inkling like this is going to be a big deal, but I doubt people thought about, you know, it quadrupling, quintupling in value over yeah. years. So, I mean, even stuff, if it hadn't, your investment and then being able to resell it down the line, yeah, is is huge. There's it's all that's part of hardware that's like there's always a resell for it. I mean, you may lose some money. I won't get everything back out of this ELOP that I yeah. put into it. But this thing, holy cow, I could purchase three of the new ones. I mean, it's gone up that much. Um, these things, it's just stupid. Like, that makes no sense. If I had four of these, it would almost equal the cost of buying a 1073 desk from Rupert Neve when he was making them. Yeah, that's <laughs> wild. <laughs> wild. <laughs> that's dumb. So... You sell them, you go back in time to desk. No, I don't want to know. <laughs> but I mean, I, I've had them. I think they're awesome. Freaking love these, but they may be time to go. And I think yeah. this piece can do it. So you say that gear retains its value. Why can I not get any money from my Digitech 002, Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd <laughs> some gear. <laughs> no, I had a 003, trust me. Uh, maybe that's what I had, the rack 11. mount. Yeah, 002 was the... No, they were, they were different too. They both had rack they mounts both had racks. and mixers. Okay. I, I think it was a 002 or a 003. I had an 03 mixer, and I, that thing was so expensive, and then I think I sold it for 300 bucks. Yeah, which like, is probably way more than you can get now. Interfaces don't hold their value at all. Especially FireWire interfaces. <laughs> <laughs> whoops. Yeah, whoops. But, I mean, hold on, you hold on to it for 30 years, maybe it will be worth maybe. a lot of money. FireWire is going to come back. There's going to be a comeback. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I think that's all I've got.
about that. I want to get more eggnog. I never like eggnog, but this is delightful. That light's a standout gear. This thing's great. Yeah, yeah, it is good. Actually, why not? And the, your camera is new this year, right? The cameras are new, yeah. ZVE1. But I can't show you because you can't see yourself. Uh, anybody's out there looking for lights? Uh, Quasar Science Tube. This thing is like 60 bucks, and it's great. Fantastic. Oh, I just oh. thought of something else. Hang on. This is not like gear gear, but these I, things are truly standard. Anything out. and everything counts, Jeremy. These little canvate claws, having these around is super useful. These are meant for like video gear. I buy these on Amazon for I think like 16 or 20 bucks. There's different mounting points all over the place. You can get adapters to go from 3 eighths to quarter 20 or vice versa, whatever you need. And since I've had these around the studio, like you'd be surprised how many uses you could find for these things to get you out of jams where a mic stand just doesn't work. Yeah. And and this is like a little yeah, camera little clip. Ball head that goes on there. Yeah. Like you can attach this to these and have articulating microphones wherever you want them. And then these guys for cable ties. Yeah. Get a pack of 10 for like four bucks on Amazon. I used to use like hair ties to do it. These are way better. Way I'm, a, better. I'm a Velcro cable tie kind of guy, but I don't have to do as much coiling on coiling. You know, the Velcro, it's just, it's hard to find one that lasts a long time because yeah. they break. But these have been great. Do you want to go first? To? Yeah, go for it. You said you have a weird one. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I do. I got to find my playlist though. Hang on. I started to get organized. Oh, dang. You have I, a whole record wreck playlist. I love it. I have no idea how to say this dude's name. Oh, Rob Arujo. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Love Rob. Okay, yeah. So you know who it is. Yeah, yes. I don't know much about this dude, but I, it came up as a recommendation like two weeks ago, and I just keep coming back to this record. Is the record called 19 or just the song? Um, I think the record I or the single. But yeah, that's my rec. It's super chill. It's really cool. It's almost like fusiony, jazzy. So I learned of Rob through uh, digging into Anomaly stuff. If you listen to Anomaly, boy, that might be my next rec. My rec is sort of in a similar vein. Not so much weird, but definitely like instrumental, jazzy realm. Uh, Yannick was Dalla. He's um, a bassist. One of my favorite bass players. He kind of um, changed a lot of my perspective on kind of tonality, especially playing like classical style, getting a much more kind of pointed tone, angling the fingers at like a can angle instead of being so perpendicular to the string. Mm -hmm. But his album, Theater by the Sea, the English like theater, uh, R-E at the end. Theatre. Theatre. Uh, even the song, the title song, Theater by the Sea. It's just gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Really good stuff. And we're just in jazzy moods right jazzy now. Jazzy moods what today. Is this? Christmas is calming us down. Uh, Yannick has another album in a similar vein. I think it's called American Elm. But then he has a bunch of like jazz experimental, experimental albums with just a bunch of effects, building synths, but out of like octave and fuzz and filter pedals and <laughs> stuff. So cool, so cool. So check Yannick with all stuff out. What were the last wrecks? I feel like it was Alpha Wolf. And like <laughs> <laughs> it was Alpha Wolf and was mine Weather Report? Was that the same, same episode? <laughs> so go from Alpha Wolf to Light Jazz. There you go. I promise I'm going to go through and make a full Spotify and YouTube music playlist of all of them. <laughs> I just got to go through the episodes again. <laughs> By the way, let us know if this was a cool vibe. Very different than sitting at the table or even sitting in the control room. Like, we're, we're actually mobile. Yeah. And if you have any more, like, in-depth questions or anything about any of the gear, I know in some of the videos you guys have been dropping those questions and always love to see it. Always love to try to get back whenever we can. Um, and if you hung out with us when this comes out, Christmas Day, thanks for spending Christmas with us. Drop a... Christmas tree, Santa present in... Christmas tree, Santa present. Christmas tree, Santa present in the comments. 
And with that, bye.